Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking about the Kansas City Royals, how they might actually make the playoffs. No, this is not a fake broadcast. They might. Uh, we are also talking about the curse of Team USA basketball. Dun, dun, dun. And we're talking about tons and tons of NFL news, particularly about how Ben Roethlisberger recently had his feelings hurt. Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. I think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Worst of My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Uh, nothing like a Chewbacca Chainsaw to just invigorate you with fear. Lots and lots of fear. Mostly fear. All, all fear. Fear, fear, and more fear. It's the best motivator. It's a pretty good motivator. I mean, it gets you moving in, in a direction. Maybe not the direction you necessarily want to go in, but you, you move when you hear that chainsaw and hear that Wookiee yell. I mean, it's, it's a okay. motivator, like we said. But so tonight is Thursday, so we are going running down our favorite sports. And tonight we really, I mean, we always only put three topics in, in, the, in the caption, but we have like a million topics tonight. But the main ones, we're going to be talking about Kansas City Royals and how they're actually might make in, might be making the playoffs this year. Uh, we're talking, of course, NFL news. I mean, tons of stuff. But mostly about Ben Roethlisberger and how his feelings are hurt. And then we're also going to be talking about the curse of Team USA basketball. But let's start it out, same way we start off every week, with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award winner. <laughs> yes, yes. He's, he's pl- toned down the choreograph a little bit, but don't worry, next week he'll, he'll pr- bring it right back up. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Never know, because he is the one who controls the Chewbacca chainsaw. So, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So, so this week, uh, the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award goes to Max Scherzer, and that is because he recently pitched an eight inning scoreless, uh, uh, eight scoreless innings, I should say, of baseball, striking out fourteen people on his way to getting his 14th win of the season. And so if you think about it, you break down three batters an inning times eight, that's 24. So he struck out 14 out of the possible 24 batters that he faced. That is remarkable. Uh, I mean, he is an awesome pitcher. He won last year's AL Cy Young, and it's looking pretty strong like he's going to win this year's too. So, yeah, Max Scherzer, um, your team isn't doing so well, but you are doing awesome. So you get our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award. Yes, yes. So, and and let's just roll that into the baseball news. Because I was talking about how his team isn't doing so well. Even though I called shenanigans on them last week. I don't, they cheated and got like all the best pitchers in the AL. How you're still kind of on a downward spiral, I don't know. I can't tell you. I I don't know how to fix it when you have all the best players on your team. You said just the best pitchers. Yeah, and they also have some of the best hitters with Cabrera. And, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I mean, that they does have help, a... but you, you do need to still have you know, a good infield and a good outfield. Yeah, unless but... the pitchers are it's especially spectacular that it never gets well, that far. He struck out get fourteen people out of twenty-four. I mean, come on, that's about as good as it gets right there. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, I mean, it could. Yeah, he could theoretically strike out twenty-four of twenty-four, but that's like, come on, we're not talking the impossible. We're just talking about the very, very unlikely. Yeah, but if each of those, uh, if those guys that he doesn't strike out all get, you know, triples. Or just... all get home runs. Yeah, I guess you yeah. have 10 home runs. Then you're runs screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, that, that, that wouldn't even out quite. But uh, let's start off 
with some baseball news. And I just want to start off with you, Darvish. He's one of the show's favorite pitchers. Him and Mashiro Tanaka are we're big fans of those guys. I don't know. We like the Japanese pitchers here at Words to My Face. Could be because that was the first video we had that went over 50 views. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It okay, could be. Why. Or it, we just... <laughs> it is. That, that's why. <laughs> so we did a story on him back in April, and so that was one of our very first shows, and so we were excited about that. But you, Darvish, uh, unfortunately, he has... I believe his MRI came back negative, but he had tightness in his elbow, and yeah, you kind of need your elbows. Those are pretty important when you're pitching, especially when you're pitching, I should say. Um, so they're placing him on the 15-day DL. Now, really, my advice to you, Texas Rangers, now I'm no baseball savant or anything like that, but you should probably just go ahead and sit him for the rest of the year. You're way outside of playoff contention. I believe they only have like 45 wins. Uh, good teams have around 60-something now. Uh, so you're really behind the curve. I think you're already eliminated, ma eliminated mathematically from the playoffs. So might as well just let him rest his arm for the rest of the season. There's only about a month and a half left. So When, does this, uh, when did he start playing? You Darvish? Yeah. Uh, I believe he was brought over here from Japan about three, four years ago. Okay. I was gonna say, like, if he was more recent, they, we've seen us. There would be uh, several now Japanese pitchers that we've seen have uh, issues soon after coming. But if he's been here for three or four years, then it's kind of more expected. Yeah, you I know, mean, like Mashiro Tanaka. Actually, good news for him. Uh, they're saying he might be back by the end of the season. And I say the same advice with to them as I do to the Rangers. Is just go ahead and sit him. I mean. Yankees, yeah, they're technically in playoff contention, but the Orioles are so far out ahead of them, and they're not really in contention for either wild card spot. So why risk it? Why rush him back and him maybe really tear the ligament instead of just being able to use the PRP uh, on it? So they're probably going to wait and see what things are like by the time that he's able to come back in because he's not able to come back in yet. They're saying by the end of the season, so maybe they're going to wait and see if they happen to be on the verge of doing something. Then they'll yeah, put them in, maybe. Possibly. Won't. I mean, yeah, if they were to squeak into the playoffs and get one of those wild card spots, since the wild card is just a one game playoff, yeah, if he's available, you got to put him in there. He's your best shot. He's your best pitcher. Uh, I mean, he's been spectacular all year until the injury. So, yeah, if he's available, maybe it's more of a wait and see thing. All right, if we're going to make the playoffs, we'll put him in. If we're not, you know, we'll, we'll keep him out. So. Uh, that's what those two should do. But um, no, more injury news is Manny Machado, the Baltimore Orioles' young third baseman who is an all-star stud. Now, I am a Baltimore Orioles fan, but just look at any of his plays. <laughs> like, his defensive plays, his defense every night is spectacular. He's one of the best young players in baseball. Unfortunately, he had his knee reconstructed earlier this year, and he sprained it again. Now, if you saw the replay from Monday night, it really looked like his leg was just, like, about to fall off, so they're kind of lucky that he's going to make it back by the end. They're saying mid-September, so right about the time the Orioles are going in their stretch run to be in the playoffs, he'll be back, so uh, that's good news for them. Uh, Verlander, Justin Verlander, the Detroit Tigers pitcher, he also got injured on Monday. Man, there's a lot of injuries right now, um, but his MRI was negative, too. He's, he's possible to return by the end of the season, but he got put on the 15-day DL, I believe, as well. So I guess that's the fortunate thing. I was going to say, you just have a slew of uh, injuries to announce, but it sounds like everyone's maybe going to come back by the end of the season. And there's, well, not yeah. a whole lot, it, there's not a whole lot of time left before the end of the season. We're already well, like I said, about a month August. and a half. I think we're yeah. about. I think we have about forty something games left, so about a month and a half left of baseball. So not too much time left, but enough time if your team is in contention, like the Baltimore Orioles, like the Detroit Tigers. Yeah, get them back if you can. But let's roll that into, because we're talking about the Detroit Tigers, let's talk about their division mates, and that is the Kansas City Royals. Now, the Kansas City Royals, since I have been alive, actually, huh, never mind, I take that back. Since I have been older than four months old, <laughs> they have not made the playoffs. These guys have been on one of the worst droughts in all time. And I, it's, I can tell you, I can tell you exactly how many years, 28 years. Since 1985, they have not made the playoffs. Now, they weren't uh, brought into the MLB. They were an expansion team in the si late 60s, about, I believe 1969. And it was crazy because between 1969 and 1985, I believe they went to the playoffs like seven or eight times, and they won one World Series. And then after that, it's been nothing. I mean, Kansas City is one of those teams where you can actually see in baseball where the system is kind of broke because in football in basketball you have ways of making even the small market teams competitive by kind of restricting the salaries NFL is really strict 
basketball has a soft cap. Uh, hockey is starting to get into that too. But you have this smaller market Kansas City team. Now, Kansas City, you wouldn't think, oh, that's a small market. For baseball, unfortunately, it is. They have not been able to get any good players, like, ever in their entire franchise existence since 1985, it seems like, because they have been perpetually at the bottom of their division. Now, they play in the yeah, AL that's an interesting Central. interesting time frame, though, because they were doing really well back in the, the 60s, 70s, right, when, as we've said before, baseball was in more of its prime. It was much more popular back then. Yeah. So maybe they were able to do more just because of how popular baseball was at that time. Maybe they did have a bigger baseball market at that time. I don't know. Well, you'd think that the Kansas City market would be pretty big because Kansas is part of Kansas City. Missouri's part of Kansas, has Kansas City. So, I don't know. But I guess Missouri also has St. Louis, so maybe they went with the Cardinals. You never know with that. But, yeah, but right now, I mean, they have been on a crazy tear. I, I believe they've won 15 of their last 16 games. I know they've won 9 of their last 10. Um, these guys are doing it incredibly. And you think, usually when you look at teams like, oh, Let's look at the Baltimore Warriors, for instance. They're starting pitching not so great. Their bullpen is amazing, and they have great hitters. I mean, I believe they're leading the league in home runs. So you say, okay, well, that's where they're, they're winning the games. They're winning it with their offense. Uh, you look at a team uh, like the L.A. Dodgers. Now, they do have great hitters, but they also have one of the best starting rotations in baseball with Kershaw and Granke and Beckett and so on and so forth. So they're winning their games with their pitching. But the Kansas City Royals are winning their games – by something that I never thought I would utter when I'm talking about MLB. And they are winning theirs on defense. And I'm not talking pitching. I'm talking outfielder defense. These wow. guys have been, like, they had some crazy stats, like ultimate zone rating or something like that. These outfielders rank in the top six in the entire MLB. So their, th their whole outfield is within the top six of best uh, ultimate zone rating, where they take that as if a ball is hit in your area, if you make a proper play on it, you, or if you, like, let's say it's outside of your area a little bit, you make this crazy diving catch, or you climb the wall or something, and you make this this play. They're literally winning their, the, their league right now off of defense because their pitching gives up runs, their hitting gets a little bit, but their defense just stifles everybody. It's, it's, it's the first time I've ever heard about this in all my 29 years on this earth that defense in baseball is actually winning because I mean pitching yeah I really I consider that defense but if you're a pitch if you're a baseball enthusiast that's really kind of its own category uh, but I mean have you ever heard of a, a baseball team winning on defense no and if you think about it I mean uh, MLB it's a little different but the classical thing for like little league and well, whatever you put your ball in the outfield right you know mm -hmm. it's traditionally that's where worse players or you don't expect as much from the outfield because uh, in in little league it's partially because people aren't hitting it that far whereas in mlb it is all the time but still you don't expect as much out of the defense um especially out of the outfield you expect them to do well um but you don't expect that to be your crutch yeah, yeah. Exactly. You, usually you want to head things off. That's why the pitcher gets so much attention. You want to head things off so that things don't get that far. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just, you know, good luck to you, Kansas City. Right now they are up by half a game, so not too great. But like I said, they're on a tear right now. Detroit, even though they pulled the shenanigans by getting all the best pitchers in the AL, they're 3-7 and seven for their last 10, so not looking so hot. You're in, going down at the very wrong time, and Kansas City is shooting up at the right time. So, you know what? I'm actually rooting for you, Kansas City. Let's see you do it. I, I want to see them do it. It's been 29 years. Long enough. You can, you can make it back to the playoffs every now and then. Not I all the time. Every now and then. They, 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 I think the real problem, though, is that they have such a presumptuous name. You know, the, the Royals. The, we're the Royals. Like, there's no royalty in America, okay? <laughs> there there was, like, an actual reason why they named it the Royals. I read about it today, but I can't remember. <laughs> but you're right. There's no royalty in America. Down with the Royals. We're not in England. We're not in Spain. Where else this is Royals, America's so? pastime. Maybe we're, maybe we're the Royals of cricket. This is America. We don't have yeah. no kings. America. America. We, had, we had a salt and a swat. That was uh, Babe Ruth. So we can have sultans. We can't have kings. No, no kicks. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, well, but let us know what you think about the Royals or any of the other baseball stories we talked about. Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, uh, Google Plus, at Words My Face on Twitter, and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. So let us know. Hit us up.
And so let's roll that over into probably my favorite sport. And I say probably when I should just say definitely my favorite sport, and that is the NFL. Uh, That is America's new sport because it's just the best. So let me just – because training camps are going down. By new, you mean the America sport for the last couple decades at least. Since the 90s, early 90s, yeah. that would be a couple decades. No, no, couples more than two. Uh, No. (laughs) <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> you can't just say no. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> that is inaccurate. <laughs> All right, let's start it off with uh, the NFL is actually considering harsher penalties for uh, players co- uh, that are accused or convicted of domestic violence. Now, this really stems from all the uproar that came from Ray Rice only receiving two-game suspension after he was shown dragging his unconscious girlfriend out of an elevator. If you want to hear more about that, we do have that video on Words My Face on YouTube, so look it up. There's a, It's like an eight-minute video. Break that down. But so they're, after they got all this criticism for not giving him more of a penalty, they're saying, hmm, yeah, maybe maybe beating your wife is a little bit worse than smoking a little doobie uh, between practices. So I think they're doing the right thing here by saying we're going to look at it, and they're definitely going to come back with some harsher penalties for domestic violence because, unfortunately, we hear about this way too often, especially in sports. Now, I do get it. Some of these sports guys, I mean, you're bigger, you're more muscular, you have more testosterone going through. Sometimes you can get a little more angry. Sometimes if you play baseball, you're on steroids, and they call that roid rage. But there's no excuse ever Ever, ever for hitting a woman, especially, yeah, especially the way Ray when Rice you did it. are that big too, like yeah. you're doing more damage, more likely. But even so, too, the other controversy that's been coming up, maybe giving uh, people a little bit of a bad taste with the NFL in general, it's not just that on its own, but also like Ray Rice went to court over this, right? Nope he he didn't. Yeah, he did. I don't believe so. He went to court. They just let him. Oh, I'm sorry. He did. He did. He did. He he just had to go to counseling or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like he he essentially like got off. He pretty much didn't go for this. He pretty he probably didn't even show up. He just sent his lawyer in there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And it it seems like the courts were just extremely lenient on him too. Now it it might have been easier because it seemed like his fiance slash now wife wasn't pressing charges. And also, um, I don't think they had any physical evidence of him hitting her. They just had the video of him pulling her well, out. Well, he the admitted it openly. Well, well even yeah. before the case. He has to admit it because, like, what is he going to yeah. say? Oh, she just fell unconscious. Oh, that's all that happened. She just. Fell. I know, but so you don't need the evidence. So if he admits that he did it, that's, that's yeah, yeah, you that's, know, that's admission that, of guilt. That's true. That's true. But, but to be fair, and I remember we like, again watch the video. Yeah. He also tried to say that he could have claimed, or his lawyer tried to try to say he could claim self defense if he really wanted to, and all that stuff. So watch the video, catch yourselves up on that. But I applaud the NFL for, you know, taking, taking a stronger stand yeah. against this. Yeah, because this is, it's important. I mean, we're hearing about this more and more often. I think nowadays, and maybe it's because more and more women are actually finding the courage to get up and report it, uh, which or there's is just great. more cameras around. Well, that's definitely true, but, you know, whatever we can do to try to eradicate this out of our society would be great, so. Yeah, and in the NFL, I mean, they always have cases come up, but it seems like there's been a lot of high-profile players getting into these, like, violent or otherwise, but more violent, um, you know, legal problems, of yeah. whether it's domestic abuse or getting in a fight at a bar or whatever it is. It seems like there's been a lot of that this year already and we don't need any more yeah that's for sure but yeah so let's move on to uh, happier news from the nfl i guess sexy rexy rex grossman just got signed by the browns yay rex grossman and Uh, i think except for the browns yeah well (laughs) and rex grossman he's kind of a joke there too but um i'm really just saying this because This sounds very fishy to me. Now, they signed him this year, and they said he was just being brought in because he does know Kyle Shanahan's offense. He worked at it in Houston. He worked with it all through Shanahan's years here in Washington. So, yeah, he is a veteran quarterback. He can help the young guys learn it. But the Browns, I don't think, are going to carry more than two quarterbacks through uh, to the regular season. And when you only have two quarterbacks on your roster, you thought it would be Colt Colt McCoy. Uh, You thought it was going to be Johnny Manziel and Brian Hoyer. But with them signing Rex Grossman with only two weeks left in the training camp, if they were just bringing him in here to you know help out the young guys learn the new offense, they would have brought him in before the beginning of training camp. My guess is that they're looking to unload Brian Hoyer. Um, 
And now it was just announced that he will actually start the Monday, mon- this Monday night, the preseason game against the Redskins. But it's almost like they're trying to give him an audition to get raise his trade value, so that they can get rid of him. And wasn't he you know, doing better than Manziel in practice anyway? So and it's kind of been fifty fifty. It's been fifty fifty. I mean, I like to da- talk up about how bad Manziel is, but that's just because I'm not a Manziel fan. He's a running quarterback, and we already have the best running quarterback in the league here at the Redskins. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was that was interesting, and um. Apparently, Johnny Menzel was a couple minutes late for practice the other day, and that's a story somehow I don't understand how because apparently his schedule said one thing, and so did several other rookies' schedules, and he was supposed to be there, and he was only a couple minutes late. They say they handled it internally, and but everybody, the, the four-letter network ESPN loves to talk about, oh, they're not worried about it, but, like, it's a non-story. Don't even talk about it. So, you know what, I just... Except just for, yeah, you just... I was going to say... I like, just did the same thing. Want me. Do it. Want me. I think I can give you... Oh. Yeah, you can say double it. Just just one. Then you don't need to go boo and womp. Oh, and then you booed me twice. Well look, here. Boo! I pressed the button too. Alright, that's for you. <laughs> that's for you. But yeah, so I can't just keep booing me. <laughs> Not allowed. I call shenanigans. But <laughs> so yeah. let's move it on to uh, some more uh, stuff happening around the NFL. And I'm going to talk a little bit about I'm going to I'm going to be honest. I'm going to pick on this team a little bit here and it's the Cowboys again. I am a proclaimed Redskins fan, so they're my arch nemesis, but uh Morris Claiborne, he's out again. Just recently got hurt. Uh this guy looks like probably one of the worst draft day trades ever because they traded their two uh, first-round picks, or one first-round pick and their second-round pick, to trade up and get this guy at the number six. And so the two years he's been there, he's uh, compiled, I believe, two interceptions. So he's at a blistering pace of an interception a year. And if he stays in the NFL for the next 40 years, maybe he'll get that record. But I'm not seeing that happen. So that's mm. that's great. That's one of their cornerbacks. Uh, let's talk about their other cornerback, who's actually going to start ahead of him. And that was uh, Skandrick, and he just got suspended for four games for uh, some sort of substance being uh, flagged in his system. Now, I'm not sure if it was a PED or an illegal narcotic, but he got flagged for it. So he's going to be out the first four games of the year. So, Cowboys, yeah, good luck with your secondary. I mean, that was already a defense that lost to Marcus Ware and Sean Lee, and you're not helping yourselves. Wait, 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 hold on, what's that? Breaking news, breaking news, hold on one sec, breaking news. Cowboys are going to suck this year, breaking news. Yes, I used that joke last week, and yes, I will use it next week, but I love the joke, all right? So shut up. <laughs> so, but yeah, Cowboys are going to suck, but yeah. And now... Yeah, well, like there's I, no bias on this show at all. No bias. No, no bias at never. all. Never any bias. Uh, I'm very honest about how non-biased I am. <laughs> but, and, and, and we just in no way you, alienates the fans Cowboys from Texas. Fans. <laughs> well, I like the Texans fans. They're cool. They can watch us all the time. Cowboy fans watch us too. Because look, I'm going to be fair... And the next one I'm going to talk about is actually the Redskins. And that is because we had a fourth-round pick last year, a Bashad Breland out of Clemson. A big dummy got cited for marijuana possession. And now it's just a misdemeanor, so it's not like he was arrested or anything. But he was cited Monday night down in Richmond, Virginia. The night before, they're said to leave Richmond, Virginia to come back up here, uh, breaking training camp. So, yeah, not the smartest thing to do. And now this guy was a really good pickup in the fourth round because uh, everything I've read about him is if he had stayed in and played his senior year, they were expecting him to make such a, a leap that he would have been a first-round pick. So the Redskins did a good job picking him up, but he hasn't done a good job for kind of following on his end of the deal of not smoking pot. Come on, dude. Come on. So you're making millions of dollars. He didn't do such a good job of picking him up. If he can't okay, you know, right, live maybe. up and keep in the game, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, no word yet as uh, to what type of actions will be taken against him. Legally, it's like a fine, so it's not much there, but expect some sort of suspension or fine to be handed down from Roger Goodell, which he deserves. But um, And then Michael Vick actually gives advice to Ray Rice. We were talking about this last night, uh, or last night. Violence That's advice? No, <laughs> eat dogs instead of women. No, no, that's not what he said. But, um, no, he actually was just saying. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad joke. We'll edit that out later. But, uh, um, but yeah, so he was kind of just telling Ray Rice, hey, look, because Ray Rice has come out recently. He has had more press conferences. He has admitted his wrongdoing a lot better than he did at his press conference. Uh, so, I mean, he is a good guy. This is the first time he ever did anything wrong. 
but he's still taking heat for it, which he deserves. I mean, there's you deserve to get what you're getting. Uh, I don't know Michael that's Vick, the first time, but the first time that's been so big. I don't know. Huh? Well, Ray Rice is first the first. Time. I don't think it's his first. He's time. never gotten in trouble. I've, I've never. He's never gotten in trouble in the NFL. This is his first offense for anything in his entire career there. Uh, and you're typing it in just to double check me. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and double check. You, me. you don't hear anything. No but, one hears anything. <laughs> nobody hears any typing. But yeah, so Michael Vick is saying to Ray Rice because Michael Vick went through a, a scandal as well. Uh, he's just said, you know what? It, you're never going to be done saying you're sorry. Keep making amends with everybody you see. And I think that's good advice because you know what? Yes, you messed up, but America is the land of the second chances. So if you show us that you are sorry, you're willing to work on your faults, we'll accept you back with open arms, no problem. So I think that was really good advice from Michael Vick, a guy who's gone through uh, through hell pretty much and you know made it back out the other side. You know, again, I'm not excusing what Michael Vick did. He he did something absolutely horrendous by with all the dog fighting, dog murder, pretty much, but. You know what? I do believe if you are truly sorry about something, that we should let you. You should be able to be welcomed back. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't really do anything crazy. He's not Hitler, so. Yeah, that's because that's our standard. If you're not Hitler, <laughs> you're okay. You're, you're all right. <laughs> Just don't be Hitler, and you're all right. Yeah. Well, or Idi Amin. He's not a good guy either. I'm trying okay. to think of all these dictators or Stalin. You can't be Stalin either. Or Nero, okay. he was a bad guy. Mussolini, uh, though, is okay. Just Mussolini uh, yeah. on the fence, on the fence. Um, <laughs> damn, I'm trying to figure out. Remember some of the uh, the South American dictators that were horrible. Uh, just don't be a dictator and uh, apologize and be sorry and and we'll accept you back. But uh, yes. Can we go Zodiac? Every so once now on to the story of the night. Every now and then, just every now and then, <laughs> throw it in there. But. Uh, yeah, don't be don't be Jeffrey Dahmer. Don't be don't be Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, we're setting standards. Don't be leaders of some sort of drug cartel. That's not cool. We won't like you back. But <laughs> but on to the main football story of the night. And I just I just kind of chuckled when I saw this. So uh, Emmanuel Sanders, really talented wide receiver from Pittsburgh, been there three th- was there three years. Left via free agency this year to join the Denver Broncos. Who can blame him? I mean, why would you not want to go to an offense which set records last year, and especially in passing? It's just good for your career, if you ask me. So he left, and he was asked, well, hey, what's the big difference between Peyton and Ben Roethlisberger? He responds, and I'm paraphrasing, but he responds, well, you know what? Ben is not the leader that Peyton is. Peyton is the best football leader on the football field that I've ever been with. And, you know, just he's a great guy. He's a great leader. Okay, you know. Well, Most Peyton's known for that. Like he's been known for that since Indianapolis, since early in his career of taking Peyton charge a of that. Favor. I mean, taking charge in a way that pretty much no other quarterback does. Other yeah, than I believe, I believe if, if Peyton Manning starts 16 games for your team, you win at least 11 of them. I don't think he's ever had less than an 11 win season, maybe a 10 win season in there. But I don't think yeah. he's ever had a losing season except for his rookie year. So, and we're talking <laughs> about a quarterback that for a long time in the, in in Indianapolis, I think. St- Still with the Broncos, <laughs> wasn't he? He was calling the offensive plays himself most of the time. I mean, he's pretty much the offensive coordinator for whatever team yeah. he plays for. So, yeah, so so it's not really a slight to be to say that he is a better is a bigger leader on the yeah, field because I mean, like I said, he's I almost a coach. It. Like, come on. He said it a little bit more, almost like it was stinging at Ben Roethlisberger. He did say, "Well, I've never played with a leader that good. He's the greatest leader I've ever played with," which you know is not untrue. So. And Ben, now, Ben didn't really take too much offense to this, I don't believe, but some reporters caught up with him, and they said, hey, did you hear about what Emmanuel Sanders said about you? He's like, yeah, I heard. My man, man. It kind of hurt my feelings. Uh, I mean, he didn't even reach out to me after he said that. Like, I know he likes me, and it was probably taken out of context, but he at least could have called me after it. I mean, <laughs> he could have called it. It's like really bad. It sounds like a bad breakup or something. I, don't know. Yes. I didn't get any closure from our relationship. Now I can never heal properly. It's like, come on, Ben. Come, really? I mean, seriously? And, and now Emmanuel Sanders came out after that and said, come on, man. Ben, ben Roethlisberger knows what I meant. He knows I wasn't trying to take any slights at him. But, you know, I mean, that's weird. And then Ben, ben goes, but he still hasn't called me yet. <laughs> oh. You know, so <laughs> that's just the most hilarious thing to me. He hasn't called me. Like, he hasn't, okay, he hasn't reached out to me. And, and it's just, I just, 
I have to laugh at this because that's just absurd. It's like, listen. I gotta dude. imagine he's waiting up every night too and just like <laughs> devastated. He's like, why hasn't he called? He's just waiting <laughs> let me, at the let phone. Let me call somebody to make sure my phone. Oh, yeah, the line's open. Why isn't he calling? What? The, what? And, like, he doesn't care for kids, me anymore. If his wife gets on the phone. He's like, no, hang up the phone. Emmanuel might call. Emmanuel might call. <laughs> Honey, we have call waiting. Emmanuel my call. But yeah, so I just thought it was just kind of ridiculous that he was he was getting so upset about it because number one, what he said was factually correct. Nobody can dispute that. When you look at the pantheon of quarterbacks, yes, Ben Roethlisberger, I hate to say it, he's been a very good quarterback over his career, but he's been nothing compared to Peyton Manning. Now, some and of you might out there say we were just saying this guy is essentially a coach on yeah. the field. You, what are you expecting? No one expects any quarterback to be on that level. It's not a slight against you if you're not on that level. It's fine. It's, yeah, it's it, not an expected level, okay? Yeah, it's it's an abnormal level. I mean, and Ben Roethlisberger has been great throughout his career. And and some of you out there might say, well, hey, Ben has two Super Bowls. Um, Peyton only has one. Okay, you can say that. But if you want to look at how many Super Bowls, they've both been to three. So Peyton lost two, won one. Ben's two and one. So, okay, you could give him that. But also, Peyton Manning has never had the defenses that Ben Roethlisberger has had in Pittsburgh. Because Pittsburgh, I mean, just that's just a defensive machine. Like, it doesn't matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter who they trot out on the field. They, they're top five defense. I don't know how that happens, but it just always happens. So, I mean... Not only they, that, like, even without that, like, th- this wasn't a question about who's the better quarterback, who's the better player on the team or anything. This was a specific... Leadership, okay? Yeah. Your leadership is great. Leadership helps you get those those wins. Um, you need leadership, but that's not that doesn't equate to necessarily better quarterback at playing the quarterback position. Because mm-hmm. um, when we talk about leadership with Peyton Manning, he is an amazing quarterback. Like mm-hmm. what, what, we saw last season, how great of a quarterback he is. But leadership for him is going much beyond what the quarterback position is. So it's not that big. It's, it's not saying like he's a better quarterback than you. I'll say it. I think Peyton Manning is a better quarterback. But I will say it still, too. That wasn't the face, question. We're going to be referring on this. The Peyton Manning is the better quarterback. Yeah. Well, you could have called me, man. Why didn't you call me afterwards? Oh. Oh. Why didn't he call me? I'm so sad. Like, come on, Ben. Come on. So I think he just football. wants to talk to him on the phone. I think he just uh, wants to call. It. But you know what? You can call him, Ben. You don't have to wait for him to call you. So, yeah. But, yeah, that's uh, that's our football segment for the night. So let us know what you think about any of our football stories. Is Ben Roethlisberger being a big crybaby, or does he have any legitimacy in that? And I just say that because I usually like to say two parts of the, the story, you know, yin and yang, you know, different ways you could look at it. But really, if you tell me that Ben Roethlisberger is justified, I'm going to call you a big baby and do this voice. <laughs> Oh, why didn't you call me? So nobody's allowed to agree with Ben Roethlisberger on this one. Sorry, not allowed. You're allowed to. Just go ahead, comment down below. Don't do it. Let us know. Don't if do you it. agree with Ben Roethlisberger. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Don't do it. Don't agree with him. But yeah, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words For My Face on Twitter. Uh, Google+, Plus, Facebook, at Words For My Face at gmail.com. All good places to get a hold of us. Let us know what you think. So, yeah. And let's roll it on over to the last story of the night. And that we, I want to talk a little bit about the curse of Team USA. <laughs> and and I say the curse, and it's not really a curse, and it's not like they've been doing so bad most of the time, but this year they've seemed to have a lot of dropouts. Uh, let's just look at this. So usually, I mean, you don't always get the highest profile players. Kobe Bryant really hasn't played on any of these teams since he won the, the 2004, 2000 Olympics, you know. Uh, and Michael Jordan only played on two Olympic teams, so I don't hate on these players. As long as you play a little bit, you know, support your country, let Jordan the young guys come play through. on two? Because I, I think uh, he... Uh, dream team he first... two and one. Because I thought around, like, he went on before he went into the uh, the NBA. Because wasn't that still under the you couldn't be a professional rules for the Olympics? Man, you got me there. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, but I do know he was on the 92 Olympics because uh, that was the dream team. So Okay, well, so maybe by then. I think then, he was on the 88 as well. By then. I think he was on the 88 as well. So, um, but yeah, so, I mean, but he only played two. I mean, his, his career went into the 2000s. He didn't show up to every everyone. So I don't hate on some of these players for not playing. But just listen to the list of players that have dropped out since camp started. Um, you have 
I'm uh, sorry. Kevin Love, understandable because he's going through all these different trade debates. He doesn't know where he's going to be. He doesn't want to throw a wrench in any of the works there. So he wants the cogs to move smoothly. I understand that. Kevin Durant dropped out. We talked about it last week. He was fatigued. He had a long season. He's the best player in the NBA. It's really hard to carry a franchise on your shoulders and do so well and be the most well-spoken and kind-hearted basketball player that has ever graced the court and maybe the most handsome. I'm just going to go there. Bless you. Uh, you, Your sneeze ruined my Durant rant, all right? No more curse, Brian. It was the curse. It it was the curse of Team USA basketball. Yeah, so... But you also the curse have, includes a plague now. <laughs> well, hey, that's a pretty bad curse. But you also have Blake Griffin uh, pulled out, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge pulled out, and Finals MVP Kawhi Leonard all pulled out. And that's not even to mention the horrific injury that happened to Paul George. And it's just, so that's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm about to tell you seven. Seven players that just are like, eh, no, not dealing with that, you know? It's it's almost going to be like the Madden curse. It's because it's like, ah, eh, no, I don't want to get hurt next year. I just don't want to participate in this team, you know? So it, it's just interesting because I love basketball. I love USA basketball. But Mark Cuban made a statement a couple months ago. He said he did not want his players playing on any international teams. And he was saying that because, you know what? Hey, these are players. They're commodities. They do play all year round. They are supposed to take these rest breaks. They are supposed to take a month or two off from the rigors of the NBA schedule, and these international teams take away from that. Uh, now, at first when he said that, I was kind of like, oh, you're being selfish. But with all this stuff happening, I mean, with the way Paul George snapped his leg in half. Now, doctors do say, I did re- read a report about this, doctors did say Paul George should make a full recovery, but not for about not a whole t- It'll be a while before he's back up to full speed, and to be honest with you, I don't think anybody fully recovers from breaking both their tibia and their fibia in one fell swoop. So I, I don't know how that's going to work out. But I just I just found it funny that it just seems like Team USA is dropping like flies. It's just like, what's going on here? And I have a couple theories. Number one is Kevin Durant would still be on the team if you weren't stupid and cut Bradley Beal and John Wall. So you kind of did that to yourselves, Mike Krzyzewski and Jerry Colangelo. Number two is Mark Cuban was right. These guys are just too fatigued. You have a lot of these players that played long playoff series. So you're looking at they played 100 game seasons, and now you're expecting them to just keep going and then play another 20 so games. It's just players need rest. Baseball, longest season in in all sports, but yet you don't. Those players do nothing if they're not in the playoffs in October, November, December, January. Yeah, they come back in February, but they make sure they take their rests. They do it well. Uh, soccer, they have a big. They have the summer off pretty much, unless you're in like the World Cup, but that only comes around once every four years. Mm-hmm. And then when they start up the preseason, I mean, bat, uh, football. They have the longest off season, and that is because that is the most physical sport out there. And basketball, and they I'm not also have just the fewest games in general, yeah. even during their season, even during a given time frame, because it's only one game a week. Yeah, ever. well, I mean, like I said, it is the most physical sport out there. So it, it's, I mean, you got to understand when it's just a game of boom, boom, boom. You know, it's it's not the easiest to keep it going for too long, and and so it it just it kind of saddens it's most me, quick. but it makes. Me I don't know good. if it's the most physical. Like I love football, what's but more, I think what's more physical than football? Things like like there's others that can be physical in in different ways. Like I think the big thing about football is it's it's more high impact. What is physical? It's like more sprinting and more extreme hits. Well, yeah, rather it's like than, sprint rather than constants. Yeah, well, some of these players like running backs. It's like they're sprinting yeah. into brick walls like 30, 40 times yeah. a game. You know, I, so I mean, it's it, more like bursts of energy though is not other there's other sports that are are very tough that are more just distributed you well, know, i mean yeah soccer you're running around for 45 for 90 minutes really rugby. for the whole game rugby is physical yes but they have more restrictions on how you can tackle you have to they square up you have to wrap does? up huh yeah more, more than, than football? football for the way they tackle yeah football is pretty much okay don't hit them in their head and you're good. <laughs> Don't launch yourself like a missile, and you're good. But you can hit people at their knees and flip them over. And I mean, and also you got to look at football with, with so many knee injuries and stuff. It, like somebody might say, "Oh, hockey's a little more physical." Yeah, but those guys are gliding on ice. 
So if you get hit, it's it's not like you're stopped in one spot and then you're moving your body jaggedly. It's just like, oh, you're kind of floating. So yeah, it can hurt. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that hockey well, doesn't physical hurt. doesn't necessarily not mean physical. rough. Yeah, but we're getting way off a of topic. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, so basketball. I, I think these guys are right. I would not mind seeing it go back to you can only be amateur to play in these events, like the Olympics. Our college basketball teams would produce – the best college basketball players in the country would whoop every team in the world. I don't care if they have pros on their teams. We'd still whoop all those teams. So, I mean, you could go back to that. Bas- college basketball season, a lot less strenuous. They have about 30 games instead of the 82 in the NBA – we wouldn't really drop off in competition, and yet you might save the players from some of these crazy injuries, which honestly don't really happen. Paul George was a freak accident. But, man, if you saw that replay, oh, my God, that was just, oof. Yeah, I don't wish that on anybody, not even Tony Romo, and I'm not a Cowboys fan. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I wish that on Tony Romo. No, I'm joking. I don't wish that on Tony Romo. I don't wish injuries on anybody, really. I sometimes wish that they wouldn't play, but I, I never wish injuries on anybody. But, yeah, so... It seems like uh, there's a little bit of a curse floating over Team USA basketball this year. Well, let's hope we still win the World Cup in FIBA because we're still better than everybody. I mean, literally, you could put, like, the bench of the Wizards out there and they'd probably be beat most people, so. By yeah. the way, going yeah. to our earlier discussion, the Dream Team was 1992, right, with Michael Jordan. That looks like it was the first year that they were um, – allowed to have professionals oh that was okay um because in 1988 they were still using uh college basketball players and i think jordan was on that team like right out of college or something like that well he he was drafted in 86 i think so he would have been a pro okay well maybe not maybe he wasn't on that team maybe it was a different time but it should have been they like in the 88 summer olympics uh the u.s came in third they had all college basketball stars um, that increased calls to allow professionals in, which had already started. Um, I thought that they had actually even allowed it by then, but I guess we still weren't allowing um, professionals on our teams. It and could have been the 90- NBA was not allowing them. The IOC, the uh, the Olympic could Committee, be the US probably would allow them. It wasn't but the U.S. Idea. basketball said no, um, yeah. which, again, to save your players, it's not a bad idea. And yeah. you know what? It might make the world feel better about themselves if we don't just crush them in basketball every year. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, here we go. Um, so, okay, Jordan, though, was on in his college career. He had gotten gold in the 84, so okay. he did play as not a professional before he hit pro status. It was just way back in 84 that he did that. Hmm. Um, so. But by 92, they allowed professionals to play, so he played again. There you go. Oh. Okay, there, there you go. So he, he won two golds. So... But yeah, so tell us what you think. Is there really a curse on Team USA basketball? Am I blowing this out of proportion? Is this really just a one-year freak accidents that are happening? Or is this going to become a trend? Do you think NBA players should play in these tournaments, or should it be amateurs? Let us know. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google+, and uh, yeah, Facebook, all places to get a hold of us. And I almost forgot to do it, but I will not forget to do it. Uh, we are doing our weekly previews of every division leading up to the beginning of the season. And if you've noticed, they've gotten shorter and shorter because uh, it's not as fun to do. But today, I'm going to do the AFC East preview, and here's my preview. Patriots are going to crush. Okay, I, that's not all. Um, the Bills are in rebuilding status. So are the Jets. The Jets, I mean, I think Geno Smith will be a good quarterback, but he's just not quite at that level right now. Um, and then you have the Dolphins. Uh, Tannehill, Hill, Tannehill. Yeah, he'll, he's getting better as a quarterback, but he's not quite where he needs to be. Give him a couple more years. He was kind of a project when they drafted him two years ago anyway, so it's not too surprising. So, yeah. Yeah, unless everything goes right for the Jets and the Bills, they have no shot. And Dolphins, really, they'd have to have a lot go right for them, too, to be able to make it in. So that's my AFC. It seems like if uh, we need, they would all need Tom Brady to quit or get injured or something like or that. Or pull Paul George and have his leg snap in half. I don't wish that on anybody. Don't wish that on him. We're just that, saying that's the only way that things are going to go differently. It's <laughs> the only way they can get in there. So, yeah, so. Yeah, you know what? That just about does it for the show tonight. I think my boy Sean was watching tonight, so what's up, Sean? But, uh, yeah, so as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. (laughs) 